Welcome everybody to this um, Spurs 95.0.01 um, uh, video call after the game, the Carabao Cup semi-final. We welcome Terry from Vermont to, uh, today. So welcome Terry, Terry thanks for joining us. I see you. We have Jamal, Steve, Terry and me, Kamal in Florida, Jam in Connecticut, Steve in um, down the road from the Spurs Stadium in Waltham. So, Waltham Forest, as you'd like to call it. Just you can see the stadium from your ground, right? Uh, from your garden, right, Steve? From my window, from the from my upper window, rather than the, yeah. <laughs> That's the view that's we all want. That's about as close as you can get to the games right now in England, I should think. Absolutely. Well, so what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to start off with just a few steps. Well, actually, I'll let Jem start with the team lineups. Can you go ahead, Jem? Yeah, so uh, starting lineup today. Oh, geez, I didn't have it right, but it was the recent goal. Uh, we had um, we had Ori around on the right in central midfield. We had Sanchez, uh, not central midfield, central defense. We had Sanchez alongside Dia. Uh, on the left side, we had Regulon. Reg Excuse me. Uh, Hoiberg and Sissoko holding that midfield. Sissoko with the man of the match performance today. Um, up front, we had uh, Son, Kane, and Lucas started up there with him. And also Ndombele. Great. Thanks for that, Jam. I'm just going to quickly go through some stats. Uh, I mean, you're probably all wondering what kind of stats can we have against Brentford because it's not a team that we played very much against. But it made some interesting reading. Brentford have been around for a very long time. Our first time we played them was actually in 1902. Um, in total, we've played them 42 times, we've won 23 times, they've won six times, and there have been 13 draws. Uh, the interesting stat that I wanted to point out, well, which I know you'll find fascinating, Steve, and that is the fact that the, the last time we played them in the league was in 1949, and that oh. was in the old uh, uh, Division Two. And, I, ce I celebrated my 50th birthday of that game. <laughs> <laughs> and we did beat them actually and then believe it or not we never we haven't played them we didn't play them again until 1992 and that was in the league cup and the last six times or well, the seven times we've played them um have been in the league cup we've beaten them six times there was one draw and we beat them in the replay um so Brentford really haven't had a, a really good record against us it's interesting to know that we haven't really played them in the last time we played them in the league was in 1949 the only other thing I wanted to add to that was that Brentford have never made it to pass the a semi. Well, this is their first major semi final in their history. Um, and they never obviously haven't made it to a final yet because we beat them. Um, just the interesting stats for the game itself. For the first time in a very, very long time, guys, and I'd be interested to get your views on it, um, is uh, we actually beat the, a team on possession. We had 54% and they had 46%. So, wow, that's a big turnout for the books. Mm -hmm. 12 shots from us, 11 from Brentford, five we had on target, three they had on target, three corners for us, two for them. And interestingly, judging by the cards, we actually committed 14 fouls and they only committed 10. However, they, we got one yellow card, they got three, and obviously they got a red card, as you all saw, that vicious tackle on uh, uh, um, which we can talk about later. So, just talking about the first half, uh, um, I'll, ask, I'll ask Terry to come in first, since um, he's our, our, our special guest today. But what, what did you take on that performance, Terry? Well, um, I thought it was a good team performance. Um, I also thought there were some uh, really uh, some individuals that, that, that stuck out for me. Um, I thought Sissoko deserved to be man of the match. Um, he looked great, you know, box to box. Um, uh, you know, the header was just spot on. Um, you know, I really liked what he did in the second half down the right hand side, um, creating chances. <clears throat> um, I thought Serge had a great game. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I like the subs. Winksy looked strong when he came in. Uh, and Dumbele, I, I thought was fantastic. I, I just, I really enjoy watching his style of play. Um, he has this sort of like um, hesitation, you know, step over move that just shakes guys off of him so quickly and, and creates space. Um, you know, his through ball to Sonny was fantastic. Um, you know, Kane was pinging long passes all over the place. Um, I think it was an important win for the team. Um, I think it was good to see us play and to have that possession, even though, uh, you know, they, 
Brentford just kind of backed off and just, you know, had two banks, you know, of like five and six or six and five. And, um, and, and, and um, you know, they, they didn't, I don't think they challenged us too much in the midfield. I think that was part of their game plan in the, in the second half, but, you know, it was still good to see the possession and, uh, you know, it was a great win. And I think it's good for morale. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Carrying on from what Terry said and Brentford style of play, did you think that in the first 10, 15 minutes, they looked probably the stronger team? Would you agree? Well, I think the, um, the, the match stats that you went through um, earlier, I wonder what the first half match stats were. Because mm. the sense I got was that one, I, we got an early goal. Brilliant. That's great. But we then sort of sat back a bit. And um, I, I, I would suspect the first half stats, they had more possession. Uh, I thought their movement was pretty good. Um, however, having said that, I never felt we were going to lose. Mm. And that's very rare with um, Spurs. I always felt this was... You know, a stroll in the park isn't really giving them the, um, the credit they deserve for getting where they are. But I did feel that we were... Probably, we had a couple more gears we could, we could use if we needed. That was the whole sort of sense I got of, well, certainly... Um, the first half and probably the second half as well. Right. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Did you think that Brentford, I, I thought when Brentford um, sort of uh, attacked, they never really looked like they were going to score, at least in the first half. So I, I definitely felt that. I felt like, you know, we definitely seemed in control of the match for long periods of the time. Um, like you said, possession wise in the first half, probably didn't have more possession, but uh, it was controlled, it was contained. It wasn't like they were attacking us, you know, ball after ball into the box or anything like that. So it was, uh, it was pretty well composed first half performance from us. Um, I think, I think for most of the match, I felt that way that we would win quite easily uh, until they scored. Until <laughs> and then I was like, oh well, here we go again, you know. Um, wow. Runner comes in and they they score a header and we'll, we've seen it happen. Uh, we were, I think, very fortunate with that call. And we'll get back to that if you want to talk about their, their yeah. offside call in a minute. But um, generally, I think we controlled the game very well. I think there were some very good standout performances, um, specifically from players who haven't given us that in, in the last few weeks. Namely, you know, Sanchez, who gets a lot of stick. I think he played well today. He had his moments of, of decent... I don't, I don't agree with that. You don't agree. <laughs> I, I saw agree. all of your faces go, no, no, not Sanchez. Uh, but like another one, Aurea too, he played, he did, he did well. I think, I think the worst performance on the pitch was Lucas, honestly. And, and that's not, not saying he did badly. I just don't think he brought enough to the team and he doesn't, he doesn't bring enough to the team. Well, I think we need to talk. I mean, I know we've all sort of think it's been a stroll in the park. Or can I just say that if that goal had gone in when the way they started the second half, um, and if they had taken some, maybe some of their other chances, would you all remember the block that Son put in, which looked like a pretty damn close? I mean, they, you know, probably looked like it might have been a, go a goal for them if they hadn't put that cross that, that block in. Um, uh, would, again, 1 0, sit back, same old Spurs. If they had, that goal had been given, which let's face it was, was what, half an inch maybe, if anything? Yeah. Um, yeah. on offside um, and if it had been in any other round where they didn't have VAR it would have been given without a doubt right uh, would we be saying the same thing Terry uh, no I, you know um, it we did start to sit back you know and, and I like you were saying Jamal I thought oh boy you know here we go again but at the same time, I think, Steve, you were saying, you know, we always kind of felt like we were in control. I wasn't, it wasn't a nail biter for me. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, I, I, I felt confident we could have taken it up a couple notches. Now, that all being said, it does make me a little nervous seeing that maybe we do have this pattern and this habit that's now in place of becoming a little complacent with the one goal lead. It's, it's almost as yeah. if, we haven't figured out quite yet how to play Mourinho's style. You know, um, they know they've got to get into that def defensive formation, but it's almost like they're over exaggerating it and still don't know how to finesse it yet or something. Um, I, I, I think we're going to continue to get better uh, under him with his style, but, uh, and I, I don't think we're going to see that throughout the rest of the season. I think we're going to improve on, on how we play after a one goal lead, but um, I noticed it for sure. Steve, do you want to weigh in on that? 
Well, I mean, we, it's, we're back to what sort of style of football do, do you really want Spurs to play? I, you know, I would prefer to see a more expansive, flowing game. Would I swap that for not winning trophies? Probably not, to be honest. But I think if we, if we sort of go down all guns blazing, I think the fans forgive you. If you, you lose playing uh, what I think Ray are, are normally says is, is anti-football, then, then there's no there's nowhere to hide. There's no sympathy. And we, you know, we've been brought up, whether we like it or not, with Spurs, with with flair players. In the past, you know, you've had Ginola, you've had Gascoigne, you know, we've had Waddle, Hoggle. I'm going back probably a bit too far for some of us here. But we've always had those flair players. Um, and we don't really have that at the moment. The closest we've got is in um, who I think I agree played well today. Uh, I think at one point in the second half, he beat about five players before being fouled. And his through ball for Son was perfect. Absolutely perfect. For OK, Son's pace has got to be there as well. Um, but no, I think um, trying to sit back on a 1-0 lead against anyone is always going to be tricky because you only need one mistake. And one mistake we haven't talked about, and maybe we will later, is, when, um, uh, is with our friend Sanchez, where yeah. I think... If the player, the Brentford player had gone down, there was a penalty there. Sanchez tried to foul him twice, once just outside the area, and then once in the area. Mm -hmm. And I thought, climbing, how many goes is he going to do this? Uh, so I think we were lucky there. So if you do think of the disallowed goal, which, as you said, Kamal, would have been given in earlier rounds, um, and then the possible penalty there, things have to take on a different complexion. But of course, we would have played differently. I thought that was a goal initially. But I still wasn't that worried because I thought, well, now they're going to have to up a gear. They're yeah. going to have to put a bit more into this now. Kane's going to have to start doing something where he's he's strolling about, it appears to me, in the last okay. couple of games. Okay. I know that he's got a wonder pass on him and will always score a goal, but I don't. I think he was virtually anonymous today. OK, I know you want to come in, Terry, but just to ask Jamal, you, um, just to come on to everyone's been... I mean, we've made some very valid points about the defence. Would you have played um, Sanchez uh, as first off? I know you said you thought he had a good game, but he did almost give away a penalty. He did almost give away a penalty. Um, generally, his, he's our third option centre-back, it looks like. It. It's, it's, I don't know why, why Rodon hasn't been given the chance. Is he eligible to play in this, in this competition? You know, that might be a question I'm not sure about. Was he on the bench? I'd also, I don't, think he was, no. don't remember if he was on the bench. Um, no, I don't see him on the bench. But um, I, I'm, I'm happy all the world didn't play. Is essentially what my answer is to that. You know, I, I think these are these are the, these next two matches are the times that he needs a break. He's uh, clearly not up to the level of fitness he was two seasons ago. And um, I mean, obviously, I, in an ideal world, he he would be starting every single match even before Dyer starts. But that's just not where we're at. I think maybe Sanchez is up on the shop window. Hopefully, a good bid comes in for him at the end of the month, or, or probably in summer. After um, that, though. Yeah, so, but that's just what you get with Sanchez. You, you know, you're going to get it at least once a game. Um, other than that, he, he defended well throughout. Uh, Terry, I mean, you, we have uh, Sanchez. We have, obviously, Dyer, and uh, we have uh, Alduero. We also have Tanganga, and we have Rodon. I mean, we, 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 why would, what's the logic with those players to have Sanchez playing as a, 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 in the first team? A discount for this game, at least. I, I think it might be like Jamal said to put him up in the shop window, you know, to to keep him um, to keep him in in form. Um, uh, you know, so there's that, but but there's there might have been a speed issue that he can provide against Brentford, um, where where. Uh, you know, Jose's, he's got to make a tactical decision. He knows he needs some speed in the back line centrally. Um, and, you know, that's that's his option. So he plays it. Yeah. But, OK, uh, on that, though, isn't Tanganga pretty fast, too? I mean, and when are we actually, you know, we paid 11 million for Rodon. And we've seen him once against Chelsea, which was a very tough game. Uh, uh, see, I didn't think he made a couple of mistakes in that game. But overall, I thought he he, he carried himself pretty well. What, what, what's your? And does he have speed? Is he slow? I mean, he seems pretty. He doesn't know slouch to me. See, uh, uh, to be honest, I, I I don't know how quick he is. What you do know is he, he he's young. Uh, he's going to be mobile and he's brave as well because we've seen that. 
Um, I, I don't know if he's going to be as pacey um, as Sanchez. Um, the only thing with Sanchez, when you see him running, I also think, is he going to fall over? Um, is he going to get himself tangled up? Um, you know, it's, he has got pace, clearly, and I think um, Terry's right. The reason he was in the team was because of the mobility of, of um, the, the, uh, the front. Is it Tony, the front player for, for Brentford, who has scored a few goals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and indeed, well, had the goal disallowed. So I assume that was why he was there. But I'd still like to try. And pace isn't everything as well. I mean, you've still got Reglion, you've got Aurea at the back in that to try and do some of that covering. But so for that incident where I thought there may have been a penalty, if 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 Toby was there, he would have he would have held off him. He would have shepherded him out. He wouldn't have got into a foot race with him. Well, I don't think Toby would. Toby wouldn't have let him around the corner. He he wouldn't have turned oh. the corner on, on Toby. Yeah, and 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 then and then he didn't make a foul. Sanchez doesn't foul him in the box, and we're all like, oh great, yay! He didn't foul, and that's the foul. that's his big positive <laughs> his contribution. Highlight. Yep. Not yet, <laughs> not getting a penalty in the box. You know what I mean? That, that adds five million to his value. Jamal, I mean, one of the things that you said early on was about Aurier, and I'd like to have a very quick conversation about Aurier. Um, he, uh, overall, I, I agree with you. He had a pretty good game, pretty solid game. But does everyone remember right in the last minute that foul that he gave away? He has to give away one free kick, doesn't he? Very close to the box. Probably remember, was I think, in the uh, last uh, 30 seconds of the last minute of the game. He also, his crossing was very, very poor today. I didn't see him actually put anything in. Uh, with the space and the time that he had on the ball, uh, on, on the right, because he did have a lot more space than you'd expect in a lot of premiership games. Would you have expected better from him? So, I mean, yeah. the, the, the answer is very easy with that. Sanchez and Aurier are both clear issues that need to be resolved in the squad. They are not up to the level of even being our second string players. But that's just where we're at. We play the players that we have and... Um, what are you really going to do about it? Who else is going to start a right back right now? Uh, we have Tanganga, potentially, but I don't think Jose is there yet to trust him. And um, I guess, at least with Sanchez, Jose knows what he's going to get from him. He knows there's a mistake and he's hoping that everyone else on the field will do enough to make sure that his mistake doesn't matter. So, look, well, as I talk about right back, can I just um, I'll, I'll bring Steve and Terry in, uh, um, Steve first and Terry very quickly. We, um, we sold uh, um, Walker Peters, right? who had a blinding game against Liverpool, has had a blinding few games for, for Southampton. I mean, they've been playing regularly. And when, when he played against us, where he was awful, we beat them 5-2. I mean, since then, he's just gone from strength to strength. So explain to me the logic of selling someone like Walker Peters and keeping Aurier and buying Doherty in to replace him. Steve, go. Well, I think um, Walker Peters is probably seen as too slight. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, we've got Reglion, who's not dissimilar in, um, in in physique but then Reglion can can cross the ball as we saw today which um, contrasting that with Aurea um, I, I've, I've been I was unsure about Walker Peters I wondered if um, moving down a peg and that's not to be disrespectful to Southampton would suit him um, there's the pressure is on in quite in, in a different way you don't you know, we, we watch Spurs expecting to win every game. We know we're not going to, but Southampton is probably slightly different. Um, I always thought he was a bit lightweight, to be honest, when he played. Um, but he's doing very well. And presumably we thought that Aurea was better. And Doherty was better. Well, and we, I think we've concluded over the last few games that Doherty isn't the answer. No. Um, far from it, actually, which is a, such a shame because I thought, oh, I mean, to be, I didn't really know not a lot about him before he came, but I thought, well, you know, we're not going to bought somebody who's who's going to be as, as hopeless as he's been in the last couple of games. But um, Terry, the you want to the process has been sorted out though for the next two games at least. So yeah, Terry, do you want to? Yeah, I, I I wish I wish we could we could uh, find a player that is a little bit of surge. A little bit of Jaffet and a little bit of Doherty, you know, and, and then we'd have our right back, but we don't. Um, it, um, I, I do think we got rid of uh, Walker Peters, like you're saying, Steve, because of his his size. You know, he he he's not the type of of uh, you know defensive wing back player that that 
Mourinho has in mind for his team. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think that's why we don't see Jaffa in the middle. You know, I, I, I wish, I wish Jose didn't, didn't um, in, in central defense, I, I wish Jose didn't kind of write him off so quickly as a central defender, but I don't think he's got the height that, that, um, that he wants. I think Jose wants somebody who's six, two, six, three, six, four. He'd love that, you know? Um, Cause I think, you know, right now, Dyer, Dyer, Toby, they're all six, two Sanchez, six is six, two, all those guys, you know, Doherty, I think he's also six, two, you know, um, that's, that's the size and the physique. I, I think that has a lot to do with it, with, with uh, Jose's back line, you know, even when they have wing backs that are going up forward, you know, and trying to cross balls in, you know, he still wants them to do that defensive responsibility in the back with some size. Okay. I think we've probably covered it. Just finally, I wanted a quick, a quick view on everyone. I, I we... wanted to make one quick point on what he did. I don't believe he would have grown as much as he had, had he stayed with us. There was just no, no, he did not get a look in for many years where he could have been, you know, progressively built into the first team. And he just, if I was in his position, I would have been gone even before Jose was there. Um, on top of that, you got, you got other situations where Jose has, has been known to do this with players who have potential but are not there yet. You know, look at De Bruyne, look at Salah, both Jose releases. Um, and, and, and at the time, no one's asking, why did Jose let these two go? I mean, clearly they were yeah. good players, but they're not the players they were under when he inherited them, you know? So okay. it's just evolution. Just fi final point on the game. We've all said great things about Andomale, and we've all said that he was probably one of our best players on the pitch today. But I just want to uh, uh, put a bit of controversy there. I think, yes, he holds the ball well. He does lose it a lot too. Does he do enough to be a creative midfielder for Tottenham? And did you, do you think you have one beautiful ball for, through for Son? But what, how many other great balls did he put in the box? Uh, Steve? Well, I mean, just before um, Ndombele made that pass, I, I said to my son who was with me, I said, we need someone who can pass the ball. And of course, he then did a lovely pass. But yeah. as you say, Kamal, that was probably one. And you can beat five players on the, um, on the, on the centre circle and do a few pirouettes and the fans love it and it looks great. But you've made no progress and you've given time for the rest of the team to get behind the ball. So we do need dare I say it, that Ericsson type player, I'm not saying we should try and go back for him, but we need a player like that who can spray the ball about and make passes from the centre of midfield that are going to hurt other teams. And I think Kane and Son are suffering a little from a lack of supply. Right, okay. Terry? As, as evidenced by Kane dro dropping back all the time. Yes. At one point, he had to dribble from his own penalty area almost to the other Yep. The opposition's penalty area. He should have passed it earlier. That's another thing. But yeah. having to do that isn't really what you normally expect from a centre forward or from a forward. Right. Terry? Yeah. I mean, as, as much as I love to watch him play, um, and, and, and I do think he, he, he makes a, a positive contribution to the team um, since we've got him, um, I still would like to see him be more productive. Um, I, I think with a player... Um, the way you have the way we want him to play the way i think we're trying to use him we'd like to see more assists out of him you know because what's he have maybe four three you know i, I, don't, I don't it's it's that's not enough for me you know he, he he's he's at our with what we're aspiring to be we ought to have a creative midfielder who's leading the league in assists and, and we don't have that yeah. Jeb, do you want to weigh in on this? I, I do i want to i want to say you you really like to pick on in Dombali, so, <laughs> but I've noticed the repetition there, uh, but no, you're absolutely right. It's um, it, it's a case of I think, and don't believe the type of player that a team needs to be built around him. Everything needs to go through him, all the time, and uh, he's basically just dropped into a team that's already built around other players such as Kane and Son. And I think the piece that is missing for him to be more free is someone. He's not going to be our creative midfielder who's going to going to be passing the ball, and that's just not his gameplay. That's he's he's control the ball, dribble past a few players, make a good pass at the end. He's not going to see the killer the killer run and and dictate play play from the central of midfield. Um, and that's what we're missing. Uh, you know, I've been saying it. I've been saying it all season. I think we need a real central midfielder who can also defend and pass the ball forward. Okay, thanks guys. Now, finally, then, uh, we have another semi-final tomorrow, Manchester United versus Manchester City. Who would you like to see in the final? Steve, you first. Who would you want to play really, against? That's a really difficult one. Mm -hmm. I think probably Manchester City. 
Ooh, good point. Oh, interesting. Why? Well, I think Manchester City are a better team. But I cannot see her. Manchester United, though, have, have changed dramatically since we beat them 6-2. I think they've got some momentum about them now. And Man City, I think, less so, although they're still very good. So I'm going for City. I prefer to play City. I think we can, you know, uh, Mourinho will um, like competing with Pep Guardiola and will really be keen to put something over on him. OK, Terry, who would you like to see? Well, today, right now, I, I don't have a preference, um, but that game, the finals in April, you know, so I, I'm, I'm probably going to have a, a different answer a week before that the game in April. Um, there's, you know, the, the, the run of form, you know, could, could change for both teams. Uh, they either team could run into injury problems. Um, but, you know, that being said, uh, Steve, I agree. Um, I think Jose loves to beat Pep Guardiola. You know what I mean? And, and that's always fun and interesting to watch, you know? Um, you know, I mean, but, but also Jose's got a, got a uh, history with, with Van U. So, so that could be fun too. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't have a preference right now. And, and I'm going to guess that, um, you know, the players and the coaching staff kind of couldn't care less almost, you know, except for some tactical considerations. But, you know, right now it's we're, we're not going to play in the final. We, we, we got to win it. Jamal, do you have a preference? I, I probably do have a preference. Um, but I'm going to first start saying, like, if it's Jose versus Man City versus Pep or Jose versus Man United, I don't, I don't like to go into that perspective. If it's that perspective, I would definitely want him facing Pep because I don't, I, you know, your old club's always going to come back and haunt you, right? But um, I would personally, I'd rather play Man United. I think City are gearing up. They're, they're, they're looking better and better every week in the last two or three weeks. And, and Man United are on a high right now. But they're still not that impressive. I'm just going to say it. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're still up there. They're level one points with Liverpool right now. And I'm still just not impressed by them. Okay. You know? Well, well I, I've run away my, my bit in. I'm, I'm going to agree with Jam here. I'm going to say just two things. One, a good reason why we'd want City is because I don't believe that uh, uh, Jose has lost a major game against Pep to date yet. I believe his record is almost 100% against Pep. If I'm not mistaken, it is 100%. So, you know, that's always a good record to take into a final, right? Yeah. Secondly, um, I th the reason why I'm going to go for Man United is because I don't believe that Solskjaer has got the... Uh, uh, the mentality to win cups yet. He hasn't won anything yet. Jose knows how to win cups. Solskjaer doesn't. And thirdly, my third main, main reason is because I feel that it would be too much of a humiliation for Jose to lose to Manchester United in the in the Carabao Cup, having won it with them once and having been um, the need to to always get the last laugh, so to speak, because that is sort of like his nature, isn't it? So. As we st as of today, and I hear what you're saying, Terry, and I think you're absolutely right. We can all change our minds three three months down the line, depending on what happens. But if it was happening tomorrow, I'd prefer to um, see Solskjaer because I think on the big stage he does seem to bottle it quite a lot more than Pep does because he's got the experience and he and he is a winner. Pep's a winner. You know, I can't. Go ahead. You may have, you may have convinced me, Cam. I I I, I think you made some pretty good points. Yeah, great. All right, guys. Well, I think that's um, it. We're, our next game is on Sunday against Marine, who are eight divisions below us. I mean, it may go ahead, depending if any of them survive COVID. I hear that if the lower teams get big COVID outbreaks, you'll, the upper teams like us will get a pass. Um, oh, unfortunate. The next round. So uh, watch this space. We don't know what's going to happen. I do know that today's testing in the Premier League has produced 40 cases. So that may... Put a yeah. temporary halt to the to the um, season. We don't know, but um, let's just hope that at least we get to see some football in these troubling times. So thanks everybody, and come on, you, you. come on, you, thanks first. guys, thank Good you, to have you, Terry.